Hey, this is for those who even care about what I'm doing with this printed Brickersville fabric. So I printed out, I thought I was going to make a quilt because usually that's what I do is make a quilt. But we decided that a quilt would not really um, do justice to the piece and that there were more useful ways we could do it. We discussed making a curtain and we might still do that. Um, with some of them and we discussed making pillows but pillows weren't quite what we thought we might need although pillows might certainly still be a possibility because we do sometimes sit on the floor at Brickersville to build and what we did decide is making an apron so this is a lesson lesson and experience in making an apron. The size is perfect. We measured it. All we need to do is, we don't even have to, but I want to line it. And we decided that pockets would be appropriate and I need to add a waistband. So I'm trying not to buy any more fabric for this particular one. I will have to buy fabric for the curtains. But for this one, I was able to get enough length to make a waistband and it'll be doubled over, right? And um, a tie, right? Because aprons have the tie in the back. And the back will be orange, so we discussed that. So then I also cut out some squares that I will use to make pockets. So what I'm going to do now is so the squares to the edges of the of the fabric of the front and the back by color right so in the pocket it's going to be one side of the pocket is white and the other side is orange and then I'm not even going to cut the pocket shape out until I'm done sewing it and um, to the front and the back and then getting it all lined up. The one thing I'm a little concerned about is that this is a very lightweight material so in order to have a nice stiff um, support so that it doesn't like end up going like that and crumpling up which might be okay for the ends but for the waistband itself might not. I was thinking of using some iron-on um, uh, bonding it but the one I have doesn't doesn't show that it will provide support. I might do it anyway because I think it's got to have some texture to it so, and that might be all I need, just so that it doesn't go bunched up and crumpled right away. That's it. Okay, so I just sewed this on here and here. Now what's going to happen is I suspect that some of this I'm not going to need because a pocket usually goes down and around. Uh, but we're not too worried about that. And it's a side pocket, so it'll go down this way and back up that way. So probably, I mean, I could have made the decision to shape it before, but I didn't. So um, I think that might have been the better thing to do. But don't worry about it. We're not worried about that right now. We're just going with the flow. Okay, so now we have front and back, right? And I left a little space at the top because that's where the waistband's going to go. Yep. And I decided that this isn't such a bad thing because the, um, apron should be a little bit stiff and, uh, this will add a little stiffness to it even if we're not using it for, um, for its, uh, even though we're not cutting it all the way down here. So 
Okay. I think I'm deciding at this point to use some heat and bond on the whole thing. The reason is this. It crumples fairly easily and I don't want it crumpling because, you know, we're going to wear it in the shop. We don't want it to look too, um, too worn. So if I see, seal them together, there's a better chance that it won't crumple because, um, because they'll be sealed together. How about that, right? So what that means is, still thinking about this. Yeah. What that means is I'm going to use heat and bond. So this is heat and bond light. It says for the best sewable bond, eliminate pinning. Pre-wash all materials without fabric softness. Pre-test it. Da -da. Well, we pre-washed this. We didn't pre-wash that. We pre-wash this, not that. So I don't care. Um, and they always say that. And so I'm just going to cut it to the shape of this. And we'll bond to it. So the way it works is you iron. After you've cut it, you iron it onto one side. And then you peel it back and you press it onto the other. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing. Um, we're not going to press it onto the other until after we are done sewing it. Because we're going to sew it and turn it and then press it. Right? Does that make sense? Okay. Here we have the back. And I just put this on and iron it on. And so it's not exactly the shape. That's fine. I'm just going to get this started. And so we'll have something hopefully a little bit stiffer to work with. Again, they don't promise that. They actually say that it doesn't affect the, um, the quality. Uh, the, it doesn't have an impact on the fabric thickness or weight, but I'm kind of hoping that it does. Basically just place the paper down and um, hold it for a couple seconds. See, it's forming here. I haven't done the rest of it yet. Okay, there we go. It's ironed and bonded. So now I'm going to just trim off that part and I might take a break because I have some things to do today, but we're on our way. It's looking nice, right? Thing. One thing I have to consider is that I don't want to be sewing through the paper, so I might peel this back about a half inch. I don't really need it to be on the part where I sew. Mostly it's just to keep everything flat at the end, right? So that is how I'm going to do that. Okay? Okay, so cut off a little border, and this... Um, the heat and bond material, the plastic, ended up being on there, but that's okay. So now we're going to um, sew the front to the back, but we're going to leave this part a little bit open. I think, yeah, because we're going to need to... I have to think about this. I have to think about this, but sew the front to the back. So when I sew, again, I'm going to start here, sew down a bit, back and forth a bit to keep a nice strong bond, and then down this way and up this way, trying to get as big as a pocket as I can, like that, right? without, um, and the hand must fit through, so at least two-thirds of that has to be for the hand to go in, right? Easily, but then it has to come down so that stuff doesn't fall out too easily, and I probably won't use the whole width. I might draw it out. There we go. Something like that. That's the idea. I might put a little fold here. I'm not sure. 
the reason would be to get a little way to put something the, I, I want to make it so that if money is collected it can go inside the fold and not fall out let me think about that okay so we sewed here we sewed here and now I'm going to do some ironing uh, this is going to be a little tricky because this is already ironed here so I can't go beyond here otherwise this is going to stick to the table which it'll be okay anyway I'll just pick it up like I do this and this All right and just scrape it off okay so uh, but I need to flatten this out because when I turn it I want it to be to not be an issue I'm gonna have to sew this again. Look at this. This is gonna cause a problem. Oh, great. So I'll just, um, mostly I have to straighten this out, but it means I'll probably have to, this side will be okay. Just fix it here. I don't know. Yeah, this stuff is causing it to stick. I, sh I possibly should have left the paper on, but oh well. Okay sewed this part. I'm going to do it a double because pockets tend to get a little extra wear. Sewed a little notch right here, sewed down across the bottom and here, and then now going to sew here and up a little notch. And then we turn it inside out and hopefully, and iron it, and hopefully it'll all be okay. We will see stitched everything twice. Now I'm just going to trim it and zigzag it because one of these is kind of a fraying kind of fabric. So there we go. We trim the corners and this is a tricky part because the, when you turn this you've got to turn it around that pivot so then you've got to notch it all the way up there. So it it's close. You'll see what I mean. So the back wasn't as smooth as I would have wanted it, but what I did was I made sure that the orange didn't show on the other side. And so being able to press it in place helped. So that was good. And there we go. And then I'm just going to add a waistband now. So the way I'm going to add the waistband, I will tell you that I think that definitely you can feel that there's some stiffness. And I do want some stiffness to the main part of the waistband so I am going to um, to make sure I do that. I will find first the waistband material. It's pretty stiff. <laughs> this is very soft. Um, I'm going to stitch like this all the way up until here so that I can Oh, like this, so that I can turn it inside out, and then I will put a little of the stiffener here, and I will stitch probably, they call it stitch in the ditch, right here on the yellow, so that it won't be seen very much. And that would be it. I have decided that it would be too stiff if I put the stiffener. So all I am going to do is make my turns and then stitch here and then we will be done. So I stitched the straps, turned them inside out. So now they make a waistband in here. Now I was trying to decide whether to stitch it here, stitch it here, or to just hand stitch it here. So I, I'm not sure, I think I'm deciding to just hand stitch it. Uh, a couple of things, if I stitch it here, uh, it's white thread, because I'm not going to be swapping between white, orange, and yellow. Uh, it probably uh, has the least chance of being seen and um, but this if we stitch it here then I'm actually when I wear it I'm folding it over 
to wear it, right? So that way you really honestly don't see the stitching because here is right at the waist and it's sort of buried in your clothes, right? So anyway, that is our Bricksville apron. Goop.